Have you thought about getting a bike from Chain Reaction Cycles? That's what we did. And if you want to find out what's inside this box, you're in the right video. We're going to walk through what's inside the box, if it needs assembly, what needs to be assembled, how it's packed. Um, also going to do the setup on the bike, and we're going to weigh the bike to find out what it weighs. If you want to see that, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Mike with 50MTB, and this is my son, Sean, and he's going to get a sweet bike. Uh, we just bought this direct from Chain Reaction Cycles, and uh, before we go into the opening of the box, I'm going to tell you real quickly about the ordering process. So we ordered this online, uh, and in fact, it got shipped from Belfast, Ireland, in the UK, all the way to the United States. We're in Denver, Colorado. Uh, it took about three days to get here, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the ordering process itself, right now, you know, we've been at the end of this, uh, or in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic, and bicycles are pretty hard to get. And everywhere you go, everything seems to be out of stock. And in fact, that's the same thing that we saw in Chain Reaction Cycles. We've been looking for a couple months now, uh, but I want to give you a couple hints if that's been happening to you. If you find the bike that you like, even if it's out of stock, go ahead and press the model, the button for the model size that you like. You know, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, whatever it is, press that, and then down below a little button will pop up and say, hey, we're out of stock, but if you want to get an email notification, give us your email. Type your email in there. And what's going to happen is they're going to notify you whenever they get a bike in. It may be a week, it may be a month, maybe a couple months later, whatever it is, they're going to notify you when it comes in. When that happens, you've got to be ready to act quickly. Uh, at the, on last Monday, we got a notification that this bike in 27 and a half came in and I fumbled around trying to get my payment information and I'm watching this little counter go down, 10 bikes, 5 bikes, 3 bikes, 1 bike. By the time I finally got it going, they said there was one bike left and I pushed go and it gave me a confirmation number. I thought we had the bike. The very next day it said, oh, sorry, you were actually not the last one to get there. You and somebody else, well, I must have tied with somebody or something and they rejected it and they refunded my money back. So I was a little bummed, but that very next day, when that, I got the same day that that happened, later in that day I got a notification that they had it in the 29, which I'm pretty excited about because that's kind of what I was hoping for anyway. And so I acted a little faster and I'm watching the countdown go, knowing this thing is an actual true countdown now. And I think I was around five to three, somewhere in there, where I executed and it worked out. The next day I got the full confirmation. Uh, that was on a Tuesday. Three days later on a Friday, uh, they gave the thumbs up that they were shipping it out. They said it would arrive here Tuesday. And today is Monday, so it's less than the full time that they said. You gotta love when they uh, overproduce there and you can deliver on time, actually early. And so it's late in the day on Monday, and we just got the box. So Sean and I are pretty excited to open this baby up and see what's inside. So let's do it. All right. Okay, you missed another staple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let's check out what Sean's looking yeah, show at. Him how, uh, let's look at it. the packing. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna check this out. Packaged pretty well. Yeah, let's open it up. So, boom, boom, boom. What do we got? Oh, yeah, I'm seeing a seat. We got some tires and wheels. Yeah, Looks like we got a package here that they sent you. So, let's make sure we keep that. The dropper seat post. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. All right, so that's how it looks inside. Pretty well packed. This, this box did get banged a few times going so far. It looks like water dripped on it, but I'm hoping that it's gonna, the bike looks good. bike's gonna yeah. be intact. Got seat posts, and we'll put it on the side. Oh, this will come out, I think. Woo! There's, there's a front wheel. Hey, there she is. Got it. Yeah, professionals, hard at work. We got another box of materials in here, no one to use. <laughs> it looks so cool. And it's got the two tone, look at that. Let's see if it'll just sit on the cork. Yeah. Yeah. Just be careful, it's not very stable. What do you think? 
I think it looks really cool. <laughs> like already. Just, look at like that cassette is way larger. The discs are way bigger. There's only one in the front. <laughs> so the, this shock is huge too. Yeah, this is not very really cool. It's gonna be fun. Let's get let's get going. Let's tear it apart and open it up. All right, Sean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the wheel so it doesn't fall over. You start taking it apart. Through all right, so this is with all the uh, protective off, and uh, we'll start putting pieces together. All right, so let's check out what they they sent us two boxes. Let's open them up and see what's inside. Here, got reflectors. Sweet reflector. <laughs> got a bell. Uh, got a trail bell. bell. Ooh, they've got stems for tubeless. For going tubeless, there are tubes in it. I assume we'll find out in a minute. But it's supposed to be taped for tubeless, and we have the stems, which is cool. Polish. Oh yeah, there you that go. Finish? That's exactly right. So that's some marker on your for the bike, for the gray, oh. for the color, on the frame. If you get a nick, you can tap it up. That's nice. nice. What's that there? Um. Oh, reflectors. <laughs> More reflectors. More reflectors. It looks like the manual, maybe. Yep, manual. Driver's guide. Um, dropper seat post info, we might need so that a little bit. Some shifting. Some shifting, and yeah, we so might need to set up the shifting. We'll open up this next one and see what's in there. Alright, ready? Ta-da! What's in here? So you get two flats, two flat pedals. Two flat pedals. Wrench. Ah, good. Spanner wrench to put on the pedals. And you get a multi-tool. And a multi-tool, which we're going to need to put on these handlebars. And that looks like that's putting in there. Let's put the handlebars on next, and then we'll put the wheel on. You have to take these bolts out. So this is going to be your bars. And we want to make sure that we put this on in the correct direction. Now what's interesting is uh, in Europe, they put the brake on a different side of the So we better double check on this. Oh yeah, goes that one. This is our rear, right rear, and this is left front. Yeah, so they do right front. We're gonna have to swap these unless I've got it backwards. The shifter's fine, but the brakes are gonna have to come off. Ooh, and those are matchmaker grips, which are nice. However, that means a lot more work. So, uh, we can just learn how to ride like the Europeans. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide if I want to lock it down now or leave it loose. Um, let's do this. Let's put that back on. Let's put it on. Grab that. The cap. Place it in position. So what you do is you go a little bit of tighten, then go to the next one, a little bit of tighten, go to the next one. Yeah. Is it fit? Is it fit or is it too big? Alright, so that's your through axle. I think I pushed the pistons. Oh. <laughs> I screwed that up. But that's okay, we'll fix it. It's just I messed it up. I have a solution. Drop it in. Yeah, drop her in. Nice. Alright, where's your through axle? You gotta wiggle the wheel. Not not that radical. Just a little bit. There you go. And spin the wheel. Yeah, that's the, the brakes. We're going to have to get them in alignment. That's okay. Look at that cassette. <laughs> I'm 
That's still, a beastie. I, I'm still just like looking at it and just like, wow, that is a big cassette. It is a beastie. Same thing with the shock. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so we've got things moving along. We've got the wheels on. Uh, the handlebar is on. However, this thing is set up European style where the right hand brake is for the front wheel instead of the rear wheel. So we're gonna have to swap that out. That is gonna be one of probably the thing that takes the longest in this exercise. Just want you to know. All right, so Sean's gonna put on the pedals here. Get them started first. You don't want what's called cross thread these. Double check and make sure you got the right one. So mine is going regular turns. You're gonna be going opposite yes. turns. Just make sure that it's not Hard to turn. If it is, that means you're cross threading, which means you'll strip the threads. All right, it's good. I really want to change the brake up, brakes out first because I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Whether we're going to be able to do the whole thing. I think we're going to have to swap them. Problem is the wider length shifter is connected. All right, we've run into a very disappointing problem. <laughs> This bike has been set up to ride uh, European style where the right brake stops the front wheel and the left brake stops the back. Where in America, we want the right brake to stop the rear brake and the left brake to stop the front tire. So uh, our problem is we can't flop and switch them because if we did, the brakes would be upside down. One, they probably won't function very well. Even if I wanted to, I can't because it's a matchmaker system, which is kind of nice, except that means the switcher, the gear shift would be on the left instead of the right if I flopped it over there. And it'd be standing up in the air like this. <laughs> it'd be a big mess. So we got a big problem. Because uh, I don't know how to do brakes and re-bleed them and re-line them and everything and that's what's going to have to happen. So I'm um, a bit disappointed because this is going to probably take a couple hundred dollars at a shop um, and they're all backed up. So we're kind of SOL. It's a big disappointment. So we're going to have to put it all back together the wrong way because we can't get it back the right way. Okay, so we've been putting this bike together. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of nice parts on it. The bad news is they're not really set up right. So we got a lot of work to do. We've been working on it for two hours and we still don't have it all fixed. So we got a matchmaker system up here, which is nice, except we can't swap back the brakes left and right to make it American over European. So that's our biggest challenge. We finally got the drop seat post in, seems to be working. We just went to shift gears and it's not shifting up past about one, two, three, four, five. It's not going past the fifth highest gear. So it's, it's rolling through the top, the bottom six gears. Here, I'll show you. So Sean, go ahead and shift these gears. We'll show them what we're talking about. So this is the lowest gear and that's fine. That's fine. That's fine, and then, and that's it. It doesn't, well, well, it actually went one more that time for some reason, but you'll notice it won't go into the highest gears. All right, go the other direction. And now it's broken in the other direction. No, no, yeah, yeah. It's not going in the direction. Look, though. So now it's not shifting up either. It's not shifting down or up. Okay. Okay, so we've got a problem. Uh, this gear will not shift. It will not shift out of this gear, up or down, at this point. So, Sean, why don't you go over on that side and turn the pedal. And we'll just try it again. So I'm shifting and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. 
nothing's happening. It seemed to be working before, but it's not working now. Here, hit that brake. Maybe messing up this gear for some reason. Let's try again. All right, hit the brake. So we're we're extremely disappointed at this point. <laughs> uh, it's not shifting at all. So we're gonna have to do a lot of work on this bike, brand new bike, a lot of work. Not happy. Okay, so beautiful bike, but it ain't working. The shifting ain't working. The brakes are on the wrong side. Uh, I had to set the brake. It was squealing. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna get. We're gonna uh, take a rest because it's now getting late at night. We've been at it for a couple hours. We're pretty tired. We'll come back in the morning, see if we can figure out what's going on. But I think I'm gonna have to go through the whole bike and rework it like I'm a mechanic, which I'm not. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to figure it out. All right. This is day two. Day two, we got the bike last late yesterday in the afternoon and worked on it last night and we did not get it completed. So we're gonna complete it today. We're gonna to bring you along with us. Uh, we have taken care of quite a few things on the bike. Um, Sean, what did we get? We got the tire on, we got the wheel on, the front wheel. Yeah, handlebars, pedals. We put the seat in and I know you didn't see that so we'll show you in a minute what we did. And uh, we ran into a couple challenges that we're going to try to take care of today. We'll bring you along with us. One, the brakes are not in the right place. Uh, it's not American style, it's European style. Since the bike came from Europe, I guess that's what's up. Uh, so the right brake typically stops the rear for us. But in, I guess in Europe, it stops the front and the left. For us, would stop the front, but for them, it stops the back, and so we need to swap those. And we tried, excuse me, Sean, we tried to swap these two, but we can't because these are Shimano. You can with SRAM, but not with Shimano. With SRAM, we pull them off and flip them around. We tried to do that, it didn't work. Um, these are side specific, so this one has to stay on the right, this one has to stay on the left as far as the levers and the mechanisms. So we have to change. The cables. We've never done that before, so you get to watch us try it. We'll see if it works. Hmm. Uh, that's one. And then two, we had a gear problem where this thing wasn't shifted. And I got a couple ideas we're going to go through and see if we can solve it. Uh, we had hoped to put this whole thing together without a, a bike stand, but we did need the bike stand. All right, the first thing we're going to show you is we're going to take that uh, drop receipt pad, post out, since we didn't show that to you and Sean didn't see it. So we're going to take it back out to where it was and kind of show you how to put it in. All right, so Sean's got this dropper post and he's going to show us how to install it. Uh, so here we go, Sean. I'm going to get a close-up so everybody can see what you're doing. Why don't you tell them what you're doing so they can understand. So this piece has to be all the way up on here. That little barrel. And then if you can see, it's got to fit into that piece of metal and then the wire has to go through that notch and then be pulled back and then it's got to be pulled down. Can you show us that again without pointing so much with your fingers so they can see? So this guy basically has to go in there and the wire has to go through that notch and then it has to be slid down and pulled. Cool. Alright, why don't we you show us how it's done. Let's take your time. So you're pushing that barrel through. So now it's in there and it's in the notch. So now I can pull it and then I can pull it and now it's in. Great, and so that's nice and secure down at the bottom. It's the barrel is in the mechanism to pull the lever. And then we just turn it so that the seat is forward. And oh great, why don't you go ahead and slowly slide it down in there. Perfect. And then uh, we'll get Sean's height on it in a minute. And it has, uh, has a quick release on the lever. Um, 
to keep it in place. Which I found out if, yesterday, if you don't have this real tight, the seat will slide back and forth, the nose of the seat. So you do want to make sure that this is really tight. And the way you do that is back over here, you tighten this thing as you're playing with this other side to get it uh, as tight as you can on that latch. All right, so how we're going to start is we're going to take a cut off this front wheel. And the reason we're going to do that is all of our brake lines are up here. And when we pull them, uh, we don't want any of that brake fluid to drip down onto the rotors. If they get onto the rotors, we've got a big problem. They're going to be squeaking forever. So we're just going to get the, take the wheel off to get it out of the way. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, mechanisms, these brake levers, and we're going to raise them so they're flattened out. And the reason we're doing that is for any air bubbles, we're hoping to minimize that when we make the swap. Okay, for the next part, we're going to pull back this rubber protection. On each side, we've got these uh, little nuts that are screwed in. We're going to unscrew them. Uh, you can use a, a spanner wrench, which I don't have the right size, so I'm going to use an adjustable wrench. And we'll show you what to do. So now if we were doing this with shrimp, we could not use bare hands. We'd have to use gloves because this fluid is acid. This, though, is mineral oil. should be fine. Just going to see if I have one this small. Hey, we use it on babies. So we've loosened it all the way up. Okay, it slid back. And uh, I'm going to do the, this next part in a minute. I'm going to loosen this part. I'm going to just do the same thing on both sides first. All right, so now that we have these uh, holding wash nuts pulled out, we're gonna firmly grab this cable, pull it, and there should be a little olive on the end that's holding the fluid from squirting out. Now, why we do this, we cannot press these uh, uh, brake levers. If we do, it'll squirt liquid out, and then we're gonna have to feed, refeed this whole system, which we don't even have the equipment to do. So. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Here we go. There it is. There's one. And there's two. Okay, so I'm going to rewire this um, around the opposite end, opposite side of the bike. And we're going to push it back in. And then there's a little click. And we're going to press this, so that little olive, we're going to press it in tight. And then we're going to screw that in. See a little mineral oil. Yeah, I got some on my fingers. Then we'll cinch these down. Put the cover on. Actually, I'm gonna just get a little white first. Okay, so we got both of those swapped, uh, looking good. Let's see if our cables will roll both directions, make sure we didn't mess up any cables. 
So the, the spike will spin both directions. Uh, what we're going to do now is put the brake, the uh, mechanisms back down. Now what Dottie taught us uh, was that at this point we should bleed the brakes a little bit, let out any air bubbles that got in there. But we don't have the equipment for that, so we're just going to hope for the best. Uh, we're going to put the wheel back in. Definitely don't want to push the brake until we do that because we don't want those um, caliper uh, pistons to shut down on us. So let's grab our wheel. Okay, we'll spin it. Sounding good. Why don't you uh, see if those brakes work? Alright. Brakes work. <laughs> Okay, we've got a problem with uh, the rear derailleur or shifter not working. Um, I mean, the, basically the problem is the chain is not moving out of this gear. And uh, first we thought it was the derailleur setup, which it might be, but we're working our way back up to the shifter and the shifter seems to have a lot of play in it. I don't know if you can see that. just there's a lot of play in there and if we follow the cable around look at how much play there is in this cable that just seems wrong to me and so we've got to tighten this up that's my guess and if we follow it around it goes back over <laughs> to the other side it comes back to here and again look at how much play there is that just doesn't seem see look how much play there is that just can't possibly be correct so that tells me we're gonna have to tighten up this cable how it ever made it out of the QC I don't know they sent a form that said all this has been checked but I doubt it I think we're gonna have to tighten up this cable and hopefully that'll solve the problem. So we'll bring you along for the ride. Okay, I'm not sure if that cable is supposed to be stuck there between the high-low adjustment levels. Maybe that's part of it. This thing doesn't even seem to be shifting any lower than one, two, three, four, five. The fifth gear from the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's stuck in seven. And uh, I don't know if the high-low has been set um, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on so we're gonna we're gonna loosen this thing up here yeah we're gonna loosen this to start okay, and I'm gonna take that out of there that just does not look right to me at all yeah that was that was stuck in there for whatever dang reason and it wasn't allowing the whole Let's see, it wasn't allowing that whole mechanism to move over, and now it is. So I don't know if you can see that, but that made a difference right there. Silly thing was locked in. This being locked into here was pulling the whole mechanism in. Now it's allowing itself to float over. Let's just give it a spin and see what's going on. Let's see if we can get down into that. Highest gear. Yeah, now we're in the highest gear. Okay. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, now what we're going to do is <coughs> line up this uh, smallest cog down into the wheel mechanisms. Let me make sure the clutch is off. Let me show you right here. This is the clutch lever and it is on right now and we need to push it to off um, what, what that does is it creates a lot of tension so that when you're going down the hill this thing doesn't bounce so when that clutch is on it's much harder to move it's staying in gear which is nice but right now I want it to be loose so I can set this whole thing in fact I'm right here before we go any further 
I mean, I don't know what's going on with this poor bike here, but we're going to get it, try to get it fixed. I'm just going to make sure that we're tight. Yeah, good. I wanted to make sure that our mechanism was nice and tight uh, to start. Now, yeah, see, now this is nice and easy, and I can see these jockey wheels. This is the bottom one. There's the middle one, and this is the cog. And what we want to do is make sure these are all lining up fairly straight. Make sure the derailleur is not torqued one way or the other. It shouldn't be. It's a brand new bike, but maybe it got hit in shipping or something, right? So the derailleur hanger looks straight. There's the derailleur hanger right there. The derailleur itself seems to be hanging straight or relatively straight. I mean, it's slightly, slightly off, but I'm going to say that's just the way it is for now. Um, we want to set here, while we're here, we want to set the high limit. What the high limit means is that the derailleur can't go any further out. If it goes any further out, this chain could fall off and uh, scratch up the axle. In a minute, we're going to set the low, and that'll be here, and we don't want the chain to fall into the spokes. So, while we're here, let's do it. All right, so we've got our two Allen wrench, two millimeter. This is our high. And you can see as I'm turning it to the right, the mechanism is moving that way. I want to turn it to the left now and come back a little bit. You can see it went way over that direction. And now I want to go back to where it was, or close to where it was, is in the middle. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at this middle cog and I'm lining it up right below the main cog or the smallest cog on the cassette. And nice thing about going a little too far one way or the other is you can really narrow it down and that looks about right to me there. All right, so what we've done is we've tightened this up a little bit. I'm gonna try to shift this into the smallest cog, I mean the smallest gear, lowest gear, biggest cog. Let's see if it shifts at all now, I don't know. Oh, that's good news, seems like it's shifting a little bit. And we did get it in there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the high. It doesn't seem to be there. Yeah, it needs a, definitely needs an adjustment. Now, if you can see, we should be, and let me double check this. Now you can see it's starting in and falling out. Okay, so we're in the lowest gear, the biggest cog, and I don't know if you can see, this is not lined up. It's too far right, so I've got to make this high-low adjustment. We did the high a minute ago, now we're going to do the low. I think I got that correct. But the biggest cog needs an adjustment. It seems to be moving. Let's see. Which way do we got to go here to get that thing to move? Huh, there's not enough. It's adjusting in, we need to adjust out. And it is not adjusting over there, I wonder why. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that I need to tighten this up uh, a little more to get this to move over far enough to even have a chance. I don't know if you can see that. See how I, if I move it over, it now it kind of lines up. Okay. Let's go ahead and See how it rolls. Well, we're doing better.
Okay. Okay, now we're going to set the B limit. And the B limit screw is right here. And I think you could see this better if we come over here. What we're trying to do is adjust the distance between the big wheel, the biggest cassette cog, and this flywheel, jockey wheel, it needs to be about uh, a, a centimeter. So between five and 10 millimeters and more towards the 10. So I, I think we're gonna sh shrink that up a little bit. So I'm tightening it, looks like it's moving it out. I'm trying to loosen it so it'll come closer together. That's about as close as it's gonna get. Seems to be the spot right there. Hmm, I don't know. Well, hopefully that's enough. Now, we're gonna try to index the gears. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna shift going between here. Let's see how the shifting works. So it looks like we're off by gear now. And I think the way we can do that is there's, there's an adjuster up here, right here on the shifter. We're gonna be turning. And when we turn this, it's gonna change the tension so that we should be able to work between these two because now we're off by one cog. And uh, we know it's not the limit screws now because we just set them. But let's try it. See if I can get it to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> We're going pretty far in, and I don't think it worked. Ha! Interesting. Okay, but well now we're looking better as far as starting. Let's see if we can get it. Dial this in here. It's got to go just a tad tighter. Got it. Oh, baby. Okay, so we got it. Whew, that was a lot. We had to uh, adjust this tension for both in and out. We had to do the B. We had to do the high and low, high and low. Ah, I hope you had as much fun as I did. Now, I just want to make sure this baby is tight so it doesn't slip. Okay, so how much does the 2021 Vitus Centier 
29VR in medium weight from the factory with their factory pedals and tubes inside the tires. Let's find out. The answer is 31.54 pounds. So 31 and a half pounds and that includes their factory pedals. Uh, it includes tubes in the tires and these pretty big tires. We got Magic Mary's on the front. Now they're 2.4 uh, on their website said 2.6 but they actually came with 2.4 which is cool with us and they on the website it said the rear was going to be uh, 2.6 but it came in with Nobby Nick 2.35 which again we're pretty happy about because they're a little lighter uh, but still those are some pretty big tires especially this Magic Mary so I figure if you go tubeless uh, get some uh, lighter pedals on there and uh, maybe get some cross-country tires like some Ardent Race I bet you would drop one to two pounds total somewhere in there one one and a half pounds and maybe sometime we'll come back to that but not bad 31 and a half pounds the way it came from the factory uh, with the factory pedals and tubes in the tires all right, we're getting there. We're into the setups phase here, and next we're going to do the fork. And so I looked it up online for Sean's weight. Sean's currently about 92 pounds on the scale with his clothes, about 95 with his pack. And so at that, we, we would add 43 pounds uh, of air. So when you set up your fork, you just check out the uh, Marco, uh, what's the name of the fork? Marzocchi. Marzuki. Check out the Marzoki website and you can see. Um, so we're just using theirs to start and then we're going to actually set the sag. But this is a 43 pounds per square inch for him, which is going to be a lot lower for you if you weigh a lot more than that. But that's where he's at. And you also have some volume spacers that you can add there. It comes stock with one on this 130 fork, but you can add more for more progression or less if you've got too much progression and you want it more linear. Uh, over here, you've got compression dampening and it basically goes from firm, it's a, it's a nice simple one, this is the way I like it. Uh, there's the middle, you can go to totally firm or totally open. He'll adjust that on the trail as he's going. And then we've got down here, we've got the rebound and for his weight, it gets 17 clicks out of open. Um, excuse me, totally closed. 70 clicks out, totally closed, which is almost completely open. And that's good, so he's ready to go for his weight. I am going to do the sag, the actual sag, though, uh, for him, and you might consider that. So you got to take the total um, uh, travel of the fork, in, his, in this case 130, and then figure out what percentage you want. We're going to do 20% for him, so that's going to be 130, 20% is. What's 130? 20% of 130? No, this isn't going to hit me. That, uh... That doesn't help, you know. <laughs> This is my math quiz. <laughs> well, it's not like I do math super quickly. It's just... All right, 130, 20%, 26. So I'm going to go to 26 millimeters on this for set. <laughs> Well, Sean, we finally got your bike put together. I think we worked out all the kinks. What do you think? I think, I think I'm excited. Are <laughs> you ready to ride that thing? Yeah. All right, so we got it done. It took us two days, probably about four to five hours uh, because we don't know what we're doing and we ran into some challenges. But now you know if you buy a bike from Chain Reaction Cycles, you now know what you might uh, run into. Now, hopefully you don't, but I'm just telling you what we ran into. Uh, just so you know, I did email Chain Reaction Cycles and asked them, hey, here are the problems I'm running into. Do you have any solutions? Uh, can you tell me what to do? Can you send me to a vendor? Do I need to send this back to you? How can we solve these problems? And I haven't heard back. It's been about 24 hours and no response. So. I don't know, maybe they'll get back to me, but so far they haven't. 
In the meantime, Sean and I muscled through and got it done, and so we're going to check it out. All right. So if you like this video, if you like the unboxing and the setup and the weight and that kind of stuff, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about either ordering a bike through Chain Reaction Cycles, what happened to us, or this bike, this uh, 2021 Vitas Centier 29 VR, let us know. Go ahead and put them in the comments. We'll try to get you an answer. And if you like this kind of material, you like, want to learn about more about mountain biking or kind of go along with us on trail rides and other information, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Love to have you here. All right, Sean, what do you think? We're going to hit the trail? All right. All right, we're gonna do it. See you on the trail. All right. Okay, you missed another staple. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Okay, she hit us. Got it? Yeah.